Welcome to our lecture on supply chain concepts, where we will introduce the various elements of supply chain and how they work together to create the integrated supply chain model. Upon completion of this lesson, learners should be able to provide a definition of supply chain and identify the core components of supply chain. Let's begin by discussing the overall objective of the supply chain, which is the transformation of raw materials and components into a finished product that is delivered to the end customer or consumer. Raw materials are basic, unprocessed materials that are used to produce goods, finished products, energy, or intermediate materials which are used as inputs to the creation of finished products. Examples may include sand, petroleum, trees, and minerals. Finished products are items that are consumed by an end con customer, otherwise known as a consumer. We will see that there may be many customers throughout a supply chain. However, the end customer that consumes a finished product is known as the end consumer. Examples of finished products may include gasoline, furniture, and smartphones. Let's now take a look at a more complete definition of supply chain. Some elements of this definition that I'd like to focus on. First, the types of flows. Information flows, financial flows, and physical resource flows. This introduces us to the concept that it takes more to move raw materials to end consumers than simply physical flows. Thought has to be put into planning, communicating, and paying for those physical flows. Payments such as the sourcing of raw materials, paying for freight movements, paying for manufacturing operations, etc. Another element to this definition that we should focus in on is that supply chain is composed of various planning processes, internal and external organizations involved in transforming and moving goods, and individuals motivated by compensation and metrics programs to transform and move items from raw materials to end consumers. A final point to note is that the word service is included in the definition of supply chain. And as we go through the course, we will learn more about how service supply chains are differentiated from manufacturing-oriented supply chains. Let's take a look at the definition provided by the Council of Supply Chain Management Professionals, which is also known as CSCMP. Supply chain encompasses the planning and management of all activities involved in sourcing, procurement, conversion, and logistics management. It also includes coordination and collaboration with channel partners, which may be suppliers, intermediaries, third-party service providers, or customers. This definition is more comprehensive in that it clearly spells out that sourcing and procurement are part of supply chain, as is conversion activities, otherwise known as manufacturing, and logistics activities such as transportation, warehousing, and inventory control and management. The definition also brings to bear the thought that supply chains are not single entity activities. There are likely third parties involved with providing warehousing, transportation, or manufacturing as items are transformed, moved, and stored from raw material state to finished goods state. While supply chains have in fact been around since the dawn of time, the integrated supply chain concept is relatively new with the term supply chain first being used in the 1980s. Before the term supply chain was used, the individual elements of supply chain were treated as independent activities. Warehousing, separate from manufacturing, manufacturing separate from sourcing, sourcing separate from transportation, etc. All activities working with separate sets of metrics and often competing against each other. Without the supply chain concept in place, Manufacturing's operations were driven by a metric to reduce cost per case. To reduce cost per case, manufacturing needed to have long, continuous runs on a single product. This may save a couple of pennies per case for discussion purposes. However, by producing large runs on a single item, saving two cents per case, customer service may suffer as the appropriate mix of various flavors may not be produced in time to meet customer demand for a mixed assortment of beverages. Additionally, 
warehousing operations and transportation operations and inventory management operations may all suffer from excessive lengths of manufacturing runs. And uh, an example of this can be seen in that a capacity constrained warehouse may need to incur additional labor and lease costs and transportation costs to shuttle, shuttle around ineffectively stored product. And excess inventory uh, may be damaged through this excess handling um, of moving products within a warehouse to get to the needed products and moving excess product to temporary storage and back. So, a key learning is to recognize that supply chain should be viewed as an integrated set of activities and flows that must work together to effectively balance supply and demand. This diagram presents a typical network representation of the supply chain, representing the various tiers in the supply chain, transformation from raw materials to finished goods. There are many steps in the supply chain that take place internal to a company, and many more um, that take place through the use of third parties. I think if you think about it for a minute, you can see how some supply chains are very simple, say the creation of orange juice, with relatively few numbers of raw materials, versus more complex supply chains associated with products such as smartphones uh, with a large number of parts and components coming together to create the finished product. Those supply chains for items such as orange juice can be more complex than thought of at first if you think about it in that there's more than just oranges that need to be squeezed to get the product to the end consumer. There are containers, there are boxes, there are pallets, etc., that all need to come together at finished products manufacturing point uh, to support the uh, transport of um, the finished products through distributors and retailers to the end consumer. So supply chain is rarely as simple as it may seem. We now present a somewhat comprehensive graphical representation of the integrated supply chain process. We have discussed several of these components, though not all of them. And this depiction helps us to visualize these components along with other components that we will learn about as we progress through the course. First of all, on the left-hand side, we see raw materials flowing through an integrated set of processes that end in delivery of the final product to customers. Turning our attention now to the center of the process model, we see the domains of supply chain consisting of planning, sourcing, manufacturing, warehousing, and transportation. The arrows at the top and the bottom uh, of the center section represent the common elements throughout these processes. For example, performance metrics, change management, organizational alignment, the use of technology, uh, customer service considerations, etc. And finally, the icons along the process model and the cube represent the various activities or sub-processes and decisions that need to take place in each, each uh, of these processes. While this diagram represents a model of a molecule of supply chain, it's important to realize that this, uh, there are a number of third parties and providers in, involved in the overall process, all of whom have their own supply chain model, uh, molecules that uh, need to interact with a given company's molecule to create the finished product. The course is laid out such that the first week will be focused on the overall supply chain concept, while week two will be focused on planning and sourcing, week three on manufacturing and service operations, week four on warehousing, and finally week five on transportation. So we have a question here. Stop and think about a finished product that has a relatively simple supply chain in terms of number of supply chain tiers in getting to the end consumer from raw material sourcing to the end customer. How many tiers does this product that you have in mind have and what are they? To summarize, in this lesson we've learned that supply chain management is a complex integrated framework which incorporates several dimensions including physical, financial, and information flows, transformation, movement, and planning processes, and must consider the nuances of the specific industry and supporting infrastructure. Thank you, and we'll see you on the next lesson.